segment on using manual focus lenses to capture cityscapes. Um, maybe before I go on and do this, oh, we didn't have any questions in the chat. Okay, anyway. So yeah, using manual focus lenses to capture cityscapes. Now, if you've been a reader of the site for a really long time, you know that I adore manual focus lenses. To me, they're just so much better in terms of the experience than autofocus lenses. Uh, I'm legally blind and I'm getting more progressively blind. So I appreciate autofocus. I know its strength, but I think that there's something really to be said for manually setting everything in the same way that you would for your camera. Like you're manually setting, setting the shutter speed, the ISO, the aperture, but with this, you're also manually focusing and telling it and really fine tuning things. So the lenses for the segment and lenses that I'm actually actively reviewing are the, uh, oh, this one's actually in Rokinon, huh? Uh, 14 millimeter F 2.8. And this certain, certain lenses from them have aperture rings. This one has a little bit of weather sealing over at the mount and it doesn't have any lens contacts. So there isn't gonna be any communication with your camera there. And this one's in Canon EF. I have mounted it to a Sony A7R3, but I also have one on an R5 that I'll get to in a second. But that's the really cool thing. The Canon EF mount is actually incredibly versatile. So when it comes to mounting to uh, anything mirrorless, it's probably a good bet to go with that. And I mean, they're usually very, very affordable and more prevalent. Another cool thing about this lens is because it's a wide angle lens, it's a 14 millimeter F 2.8, there's a lock here to lock the focus. So let's say you're walking around and uh, zone focusing or something like that. You don't really have to worry about it like turning at all. That's a pretty cool feature like right there. I like that. Yeah, no, I've, I've been realizing that as I've been walking around. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's across the street all the way. Hmm, this is what I should be focused at. Let me lock. Let me keep mm -hmm. walking. Oh, cool. I can just put it up to my eye. And it's faster than autofocusing. It's really fun. Uh, I'll show you some images from this in a little bit. Okay. And the other lens is the uh, Rokinon... 85 millimeter f 1.4 again also weather sealing at the mount uh manual aperture right here and these lenses have zone focusing so a lot of people don't know what zone focusing is zone focusing basically means that if you look at the lens and it's kind of hard to see it right there i'm going to move it to my face so it's a little bit more in focus you see a couple of markers there and right here, it's telling you that at F11, this area here will be in focus. So you line that up with what you see over here. So at six feet away and at F11, that's telling me that an area of around five and a half feet and seven feet will be in focus. Now, if I line the 10 foot section up to the focusing area right there, now it's telling me that at F11, around nine feet to 13 feet will be in focus. And that's how you use a zone focusing. And then when you're walking around, you measure out mentally like nine feet to 13 feet. And you walk around and you're like, okay, cool. They're in that zone. Do I want that shot? Okay, cool. Snap. And that's it. Um, it's usually a faster method than autofocusing if it's done right. A lot of street photographers do it and it's really, really fun. Now, I'm gonna show you guys a couple images and I'm gonna talk through them as well too. So now we're gonna go here. Uh, Brett, can you see that image there? Yes, I sure can. Okay, cool. So this is done with the 14 millimeter and broken on Samyang's 14 millimeters and wide angle lenses, they have like this really, really cool sort of character to them. And you can see mm -hmm. that right there with the lens flare. I love it so much. I really do. And I'll have more images like this a little bit later on. So when you're shooting cityscapes, there's this whole process. So let me talk about the autofocus process versus the manual focus process. When you have autofocus, you're usually uh, sitting there, you're looking through the viewfinder, and then you're moving the focus point to a certain place. And then you're like, okay, cool. Tell the camera to focus on that. 
And then sometimes you may take a couple shots. But with manual focus, you're composing the scene first, and then you're purposely focusing out, and then sometimes focusing back and fine-tuning it, sometimes magnifying, and then saying to yourself, yeah, this is really the composition I want. And because you're taking some extra time to figure that out, usually then you will get better images and you will get more keepers. I think that there's a really, really big notion these days around people that just like pretty much machine gun shoot anything. Mm -hmm. And I don't really think that you really need to do that. You can sit there and you can just be like, yeah, I got this one shot. This is cool. And that's what I did with this. Yeah, this on the other right. Thank you. This, mm -hmm. on the other hand, I took a little bit of extra time because I was trying to figure out where I wanted to focus on. And with these lenses, you can do a couple things. You can either uh, use focus peaking. With certain cameras, focus peaking is better than others. Uh, with Canon, I've always felt the focus peaking is the best. Sony, with recent firmware updates, it seems like it's gotten better. They're just not really totally mm -hmm. announcing it. Panasonic is okay. Leica is okay. Nikon, I haven't really tried it out with. Uh, Leica is pretty good as well, too. Yep. Uh, so this one, you know, is focusing around, like, where the glass is meeting the concrete there. And again, it's really about sitting there and trying to figure out like what you want in focus. And with manual focus and zone focusing sometimes, I feel it's quicker to do that than if you're auto focusing. Because otherwise you just have to sit there and you have to move the focusing point. But with this, you're just like turning it a little bit. And absolutely. Yeah. You're because you're spending so much extra time setting up the shot, it becomes easier later on. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that we sort of forgot about that as a society. Yeah, I can completely agree with that. Yeah, so I went out and I shot these during 9-11. And yeah, thank you. Um, I was able to get the lights. And this is again with a 14. So it's really fun. In order to get this shot, this is at how many seconds is this? 30 seconds. Uh, ISO 400. And I'm shooting this with the... Sony A7C, if I remember correctly. Okay. So uh, there's this rule that, you know, the wider a lens is, the easier it is to get something handheld uh, at a slower shutter speed. This I wasn't handholding at all. I just put it down and I was like, hmm, you know, this is going to be really fun. Let me be a little bit more creative with this. And that's how I got with this manual focus lens. You could do this with an autofocus lens, but I don't think that you'll be as cognizant because with these kinds of lenses, um, there's Sam Yang and Rokinon, like they do this different thing with different camps and different thought processes of their lenses. Some of them are very contrasty and very saturated. Mm -hmm. These ones are pretty muted sort of like that Canon lens that you were just talking about, Brett. Right, and absolutely. Yeah, I like that. I feel like it gives you a little bit more versatility with the editing. And that's what I was sort of getting here. So I was like, hmm, you know what? Instead of just capturing, I think I'm just going to sit there. I'm just going to capture a long exposure uh, and see what happens. And that's how I got the shot. But in order to do that, I was focusing out far away. And I was using zone focusing on the... Uh, on the lens itself but then after a while I was just magnifying in to see like hey is this building sharp and then I got it it looks nice and sharp you even got some stars in there too see did I oh yeah I did yeah you did yeah. you know I was okay. thinking thank you I was sitting here thinking to myself I'm like hmm you know I highly doubt I'll really see stars because I didn't see stars like because all the smoke from the west coast was coming over the east coast mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah it was a pretty clear night and going around, like, you're still able to do really cool things. So, again, with wide-angle lenses and with manual focus lenses, you can sit there and really slow down. So, I purposely set this to black and white, but these are light trails from cars as they're going past. And you get to be really, really creative because you're slowing down with manual focus lenses once again. And as you stop your lens down, you know, more comes in focus or less comes in focus. And when less is in focus, excuse me, you will sometimes sit there and you'll be like, 
oh, you know, I really have to make sure this is very, very super carefully and focused. And sometimes what some people will do is they'll do this method of sort of, I mean, I guess you could call it rack focusing, but some people might call it focus stacking. Basically what you do is this. Let me stop the share for a second or pause the share. Uh, so I'm pausing the share. Can you see me right now, Brett? No, the image is still up. Okay, so I'm going to resume the share. I'm going to stop the share very quickly. So there now you, you see go. me, right? Yep. So basically I'm like, focus, 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 focus. Um, and you can do that. It's sort of like the same as focus stacking, except you're being very careful about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to sharing. So there's zone focusing. We talked about that method. And then there's also just, <clears throat> excuse me, oh man, just the method of being a little bit more careful and looking and observing what you're what's around you. And I think that's really important that only a manual focus lens will do because uh, again, I think that because you're slowing down versus sitting there and just quickly capturing and moving on, you're not taking in everything. You're not necessarily noticing things, but when you're manually focusing out of things, sometimes you're moving the uh, ridicule all around the scene to sit there and check out the details and be like, is that really what I want to focus on? So again, because you're slowing down, I think that then you get better details and better images uh, and fewer images as well, too. That's always good. There's nothing worse than getting home and having to call through hundreds of shots of <laughs> the same thing to find the best one. So. Yeah, and I feel like way too many people do that these days, but this is a lens that forces you to think otherwise. Um, yep. Something else that I do is manually white balance. I've talked about this a number of times. I usually mm -hmm. manually white balance to film white balances, so that's either 3200 uh, tungsten or around 5500 daylight. And these images are 5500 daylight, uh, but I'm able to get a cooler shot than I think like uh, manual... Sorry, no, auto white balance would have gotten. And mm -hmm. yes, you can do this with an autofocus lens, but most people probably wouldn't. So when you're going fully into manual, like manual focus, manual aperture, manual shutter speed, manual ISO, manual uh, white balance, I think that you're taking a much more active part of the image making process that Otherwise, you know, phones and everything else have just conditioned us to sort of take away. I want to almost call it romantic, but... Well, you know, when all of those elements come together and you get home and you look at your shots and you see you've nailed it, it's just that much more satisfying to know that that image was all you. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And then, I mean, it becomes addicting. You're like, oh, well, I'm going to go try this again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to go through. These are more with the 14 millimeter, and a lot of these were shot on the A7C recently. Gotcha. Yeah. It's really fun to use these things. Like, I don't know about you, Brett, but like whenever I'm walking around with wide angle lenses, I'm just so happy because I'm like, hey, I can do a lot more with these than I can necessarily do with like a super telephoto or something like that. Oh, yeah. Wide angle lenses are my absolute favorites. They make you see the world in a completely different way. Yeah. And actually, I was writing recently about like why we don't have more, uh, more fish eyes. But yeah, we'll be publishing yep. that piece in November. You'll see that. So again, these are more images uh, from the 14. Uh, well, that was the last one. This is the 85. And with an 85 millimeter lens, there's two different ways that you can really approach shooting cities. So you can take the more street photography approach of giving you some extra distance, which I think is very important now during social distancing, mm -hmm. and an 85 can do that. But you can also sit there and you can focus on special details, which I'll show you guys in a bit. Oh, this is another one of the 14. I'm loving the colors of these. Yeah, they Fantastic. are really fun. Yeah. Yeah. And these are all still with the uh, Sony A7C. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, when you also sit there and you think about, like, I think that's also something else to mention. Um, when you're manually white balancing, manually focusing, stopping down the aperture, uh, manual shutter speed, and all that kind of stuff, 
you're sometimes more prone to compose by color, which is something that I think a lot of people also don't do. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I forget that I was doing as well, too. So if I had set this to, let's say, um, can you hear me all right? It seems like I'm coming in and out. Nope, you're good. Okay, cool. Uh, If I had set this to auto white balance, it probably wouldn't have set it this way. It probably would have been giving me like a tungsten white balance look and then everything would have just been blue versus having this contrast here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So composing my color, I think, is huge as well, too. Here we go. I think this is the 85. Yeah, this is the 85. Mm -hmm. I love that extra compression that that focal length gives you as well. Yeah, and I mean, like, you know, I got this idea from landscape photographers. I was originally a guy that would only shoot landscapes, like, wide angle, and then I started to do it with telephotos, and I was like, Mm -hmm. oh, this is kind of cool. And then I started to apply it to cities and i was like hey i can do the same thing i can really sort of just zone in on certain details and it's really fun yeah absolutely especially in that shot that was just before with the the bridge in the background i don't know how far away that is but that compression bringing it closer towards you so it just makes it that much more dramatic yeah no absolutely Again, oh, wow, I got stars. Yeah, you're right. (laughs) So as I was uh, sitting here thinking about the shot, I was thinking, you know, I'd probably do this in black and white. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I didn't do it in black and white, partially because this is for the review and we have very specific ethics about those kinds of things. Um, And other images, you know, we did edit and you'll see those later on. But I was sitting here thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, I can find a way to make this separate more from the background. And that was by white balancing this to daylight and that's how you get those images uh sorry no those colors that you see here in the building mm-hmm. yeah yeah that no, looks great Ooh, i like this one yeah this is uh the city properly manhattan very cool yeah um yeah sometimes it's about fo- uh focusing on little details sometimes it's about focusing on the big details yep. you know but manual focus lenses i feel they give you sort of the most freedom uh but they also make you realize that you're the one that really has full control so you have to sit there and actually embrace it no that one's cool i like thank you yep yeah the lights once again during 9 11 Mm -hmm. this was actually really tough to focus on so i couldn't focus on the lights it was really difficult to do um so instead i was focusing on the building over here uh and I was like, hmm, okay, that's, that'll work. That's the Empire State <laughs> Building, of course, obviously. Right. Yeah. That turned out great. Thank you. That's so, uh, Chrysler Building? Yeah, that is. is, that what that is? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I like to do the Dutch angle thing of just like putting mm-hmm. it off angle. It's even better with uh, with wide angle lenses because it's like, oh, okay, cool. This is like... I don't know, something completely different that you don't really see anywhere else. See, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I did this with the 85 millimeter, but another option that you could do is, I'm going to back up from that a bit, is you could probably sit there and just say, I'm going to focus on that section mm-hmm. or that section or something else like that. Um, you know, sometimes it's really cool to think abstract. Uh, a lot of landscape photographers usually do that. And it's really fun to do it sometimes as a city photographer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I was sort of doing the same thing here. When I was looking at the scene, I was just sort of like, hmm, how does this work with the rule of thirds and like the balancing the contrast out between like the uh, the building and the background and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. I can see you've done that right there on that crease on that building with the rule of thirds there. Yeah, pretty much. But I don't really feel like I could have done this necessarily with an autofocus lens like i've done i've said that but then like i've done a lot of shoots around this area and i remember years ago i was doing it with like a lens baby like uh, a composer and with an 80 millimeter i got this completely different look than i would have with an autofocus lens so yeah yeah i mean autofocus can also be great for like just capturing the scenes but again i feel like i'm actually sort of creating because i'm taking an active part of the process yeah for sure yeah these are just like random things around. This was also the 85. So again, sort of thinking a little bit more abstract. If I had shot this in black and white, 
I don't think anyone would necessarily be able to tell if this was a red, this was a green necessarily, or that was like a sort of tone of orange or that was a reddish because mm -hmm. this, the colors here aren't really important. So with these manual focus lenses, again, you can sit there and you can just think a little bit more abstract. Oh yeah, that definitely. Yeah, that's a double it seems. This was just a fun shot. I was just like, oh, okay, cool. I like the framing of this within this. Uh, but again, I don't think I would have gotten this with an 85 like uh, autofocus lens necessarily. Mm -hmm. Or if I did, it probably I would probably have had to focus on like here where it's a little bit more contrasty. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, your creative the levels of creativity with a manual focus lens just go through the roof compared to AF. Yeah. And I've sat there trying to like use an autofocus lens and manual focus, but it's not the same because like the focus throw is completely different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like autofocus go ahead. That one was with the eighty five again? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I was purposely focusing on here and I was waiting for things to walk in and out and then I was like, no, nah, whatever, I don't feel like doing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 85 as well. 85 as well. Uh, sometimes when I sit, when I walk around, I get inspired by random like pieces of light. So I'll be like, I'm going to wait for something to like walk into this. And that's a pretty common tactic for street photographers. But at this yeah. point, I was like, you know, I just bought some chai. I put the chai in this light. Yeah, go. I know. Brett and I talk about chai all the time. Um, <laughs> so I did that with the 85. I sat there and I was, you know, carefully lighting it up and I was balancing it out with the background. And, you know, uh, if I were doing this with autofocus, I probably would have thought a little bit too quickly and I would have gotten a little bit down more. And then mm -hmm. this horizon probably would have been in the middle, which is a big no-no for landscape photographers. Definitely. Yeah. Is this, so, what, this is wide open as well? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's nice. Like Thank that, you. Uh, like that bokeh in the background there. Yeah, I think uh, the fact that I was sitting there really carefully thinking about it, I added more to that separation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I also really like the shadow. Like, again, it sort of looks like a painting. Absolutely. Yeah, it does. It looks great. Thank you. These are, uh, I'm in this process of, because I moved to a new neighborhood that I really want to capture like what the leaves look like because I'm in a neighborhood called Woodside Queens and the leaves just change so quickly now. Like I'm going outside and I'm like, oh man, those are great. But these were shot yeah. a couple weeks ago. Uh, sometimes it's really cool to just, you know, find something and just separate it out against the rest of the backgrounds and Sometimes I feel like manual focus lenses, again, slow you down to be able to do that versus an autofocus mm -hmm. lens. Like, it's kind of sometimes difficult to sit there and tell it to, like, focus, like, right there. Right. Uh, but I was doing that with a manual focus lens pretty easily. That's excellent. Yeah. This is uh, part of a graveyard. Just thought that was fun. This was, again, that point of capturing something that's moving into a frame into mm -hmm. and out of a frame it's a very sort of rangefinder style like a very leica type style and with a manual focus lens again you sit there and you look at something and you just pre-focus out to it and you just let things come in and out and you let it happen um yeah. and i think that that's one of the best things about cityscape lens uh cityscapes uh, with manual focus lenses because you can sit there and you can just focus on something and like let's say a car is coming through you can get the car trail or a person is coming through you can get the trail and you can get them like standing out just enough against a background uh definitely yeah it's fun and, uh, it's definitely something uh, we we need to do more as just as photographers in general because as you say modern cameras with autofocus and as fast as they are we don't even think about what we're doing we just run and gun and it's just not as enjoyable as, as being able to, to sit down and slow down and wait and see what unfolds in front of you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Sometimes I'll just like to like sit there and look at lights and capture light. And that's what mm -hmm. I was doing with this. Uh, I don't always do that with autofocus lenses once again, though. Like, right. again, it's because of the process of slowing down. This was a pain to get. <laughs> Not <gonna lie>. yeah, <laughs> <I bet. laughs> this was also very difficult. Um, I 
this, I shot a couple images. I finally got this cat to look at me and like mm-hmm. give me these eyes. Uh, but I had to do that sort of a zone, fo- zone rack focusing option that I was doing in order to actually get her face in focus. Gotcha. Uh, and you could have done it with, uh, what's it called? I'm sorry, in autofocus lens with like face detection and all that kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. I felt it was nicer to work for the shot once again. Also, with an autofocus lens, I feel like I probably would have gotten really, really close to this cat, and I would have scared it eventually. Or um, clawed or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was just like, you know what? I have to get these three shots, and that's it. I got to move. That's it, yeah. Yeah. It's already giving you that evil eye. <laughs> yeah, right? I feel like when I went up to it, and like I put the camera up, he turned away. I'm not even kidding. And then suddenly, like I was like, and finally it looked over. Like, go away, human. Yeah. Exactly. This was actually a little bit tougher to shoot, but it actually gave me like my creative vision for it. I had to sit there. Mm-hmm. It was with the 85. I was like, you know, sometimes I like just getting the old school bus stations, like contrasting against everything else. So again, cityscapes, I like doing things like this with an 85 easy so and focus in on certain details. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was also with an 85. So I was talking earlier on about like focusing out locking my focus and you know just walking and being able to capture things from very far away and the 85 doesn't have a focus lock but you're still able to do it pretty well because of the compression and because of the sharpness and everything else absolutely i was going to ask about the focus lock actually what about it five i was going to say i was just going to ask does the fact does the 85 have a focus lock but it doesn't no it does not unfortunately yeah yeah this uh is one of the only good pizza places i found around my neighborhood unfortunately and you know i'm in new york so you just need one good place though right yeah you're right but i'm a pizza (laughs) snob and i want to go to any other place as well too but the other places taste like sadness one of these days i'll have authentic new york pizza yeah (laughs) that will be cool Again, also just like doing fun things like this. Like mm-hmm. I could have done this with an autofocus lens, but I feel like I would have gotten a completely different experience. Like uh, I would have probably shot from like top down the way most other people do, but instead right. uh, I knew that was too much of a challenge. So it forced me to think in a completely different way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was just fun. Sometimes I like shooting into laundromats because they have different types of like lighting inside uh sometimes it's like tungsten sometimes it's like fluorescent sometimes it's daylight so i like to just shoot in and see what i get sometimes yeah there's all different kinds of textures in there too yeah different times so it's pretty cool yeah this one was a really really noisy shot so i was just like all right you know what i'm just gonna play around with it see what i get uh and i embrace the noise this is the a7c at yeah, it was giving me problems at 1600 sometimes for some odd reason. Um, but I was dealing with a pre-production model. So I was just like, all right, fine. Like, let me push it a little bit. Let me see what I get. Mm-hmm. So, you know, sometimes you get to play around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is more of the street style stuff that I was talking about. Um, I did this with an 85. And this is actually really, really difficult to do with an 85. The longer your focal lengths are, the thinner the depth of field will be when you're focusing out. That's why I usually say when you're doing cityscapes or something like that, you really need to like focusing on details or like focus far away or something else like that. Mm -hmm. But for this, I was just like, okay, this guy is a certain distance away. I can go ahead and I can shoot. Bam. So I got it. It was fun. And it's just going to be one of those things as you start shooting with manual focus lenses, that's just something you'll be able to judge so much quicker as you get used to it. Distances. Yeah. And you'll find that you'll actually like fumble around a lot less with autofocus. You'll just be like, click and you'll move on. Done. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they're so fun. This was really fun to do. This was also with the 85. This is more of that creative stuff that I was talking about. It's just Mm -hmm. light trails, like, uh, you know, cars going this way and cars going that way. Yeah, those are always fun to work on. Yeah, they really are. Yep. And that is the end of that. So shooting cityscapes with manual focus lenses, I feel that they open you up to a whole world of possibilities that you don't necessarily get 
with autofocus lenses. Yes, they're sometimes there, but they're not forced on you. But with manual focus lenses, they're most likely uh, a lot of times more affordable and you have to sit there, work for the shot and you get better rewards and better feelings afterwards. Because again, you're working for it. You're not sitting there telling a machine to do it. So it's organically coming from you. Yep, absolutely. And that's, I feel the same way when I'm shooting landscapes as well. It's just that much more satisfying when everything comes together. Yeah, I really wish that, you know, we had access to a lot more landscapes out here. We do have some, but not anything like what you have. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the end of the segment. It doesn't seem like anyone has any questions today. Nothing in the chats. Let me check Facebook very quickly. Let me see if anyone has anything there. And it does not look like it. No, cool. So it seems like we are all set then, Brett. Uh, anything to add otherwise for manual focus lenses or anything like that? Just don't be afraid to get out and try. I, I used to be so afraid of manual focus lenses for so long. And it's you just got to get out there and give it a shot because you're going to find you're going to have so much more fun when you get out there and actually just do this for yourself. Um, over relying on cameras is so easy to do these days um, and you're going to find yourself giving your giving yourself opportunities to be much more creative with it so don't be afraid of manual focus lenses go pick one up yeah and in addition to that too i mean like we do so much already that's very automated uh doing it yourself is again a very creative process because you're taking a bigger initiative to really get something done versus the machines doing it yep Definitely. It, it's like digital analog almost. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, thank you for tuning in. Brett, thank you for everything. Uh, everyone on Facebook, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we will catch you again next week. Going once, going twice for questions. It doesn't seem like that. Everyone in Zoom, uh, we will open it up to questions uh, in voice chat afterwards. But uh, we're going to cut the feed here. So Thank you guys so much. Thank you, everyone. All right.